Hi guys, old man Chris in the shop again at last. <laughs> oh my gosh, recently it's been almost impossible. We had some incredibly low temperatures, which lots of other people have had, I think. Uh, at the moment we've got ice everywhere. Not much fun. Anyway, <laughs> I thought at last I must get to grips with this uh, lead screw for the uh, sash cramp and this is the double helix problem and I thought I'll try and make a new one and get it right and uh, it's come out okay but I had problems and I thought it was going to be a near disaster. For those who saw my earlier total failure and before that a modification of the tool holder. Uh, the tool holder is not the right one for the Kenner Metal Acme insert that I've got. Somebody pointed out that it's not uh, the, the uh, lock-up groove is wrong. But uh, I did get it done up pretty tight but at one point when I was starting on the second helix you'll see that I went from uh, between jaws one and three on the four jaw and the uh, tool loosened just a bit and I thought I got it done up pretty tight but it loosened and moved slightly so I took the uh, insert out and actually turned it round to get a fresh edge but when I came back to do the continuation of the second cut it wasn't coming into the right position. Ha! Huh, murder! So I had to fiddle around all my settings to try and get back into the right position to finish the uh, cut on the second helix. Eventually managed and I've probably over machined it a bit. I didn't want to mess around with ultra ultra tight tolerances so I just wanted to get it to damn well work <laughs> which it does and the old one's got a bit of slop in it and so is this one but basically it's done it worked out all right and I think I commented in the last clip of all that I'm surprised if I'll use it even once in the next 12 months so with some lube and so on it'll serve a purpose I think uh, what else oh, I haven't done the cross pin for the retaining collar. I ran out of steam <laughs> and I've stood way too long and I'm, <laughs> I'm getting oh, a lot of ouch. So anyway, otherwise it's basically done. The T-bar will go back in when I've cleaned it up and uh, I'll put a dab of weld on the end so that it's captive. And that basically is it. And with all the weather that's likely to come, I don't know when I'll next get out here. I've got two or three things I'd love to get on with. But uh, I think they'll all be on hold for now. Uh, an old friend of mine in Arizona, Arthur Humphrey, uh, he's uh, supplied me with one or two things in the past. Uh, he had an idea. He's got a new Miller machine and he was going to do a description and review of it and send me the video for me to edit and put together so that's something that might be a little bit different sometime and otherwise in between it'll be a case of you get what you get. <laughs> I'll just finish off briefly here with a, a look at uh, a small acquisition amongst all the junk I went and got myself a little old Maytag. Dale Pratt has one. Some of you folks may have seen his. If you haven't, go and find his channel, Dale Pratt. Uh, he makes nice knives, but he's also doing other things and making a very nice base for his Maytag. Uh, this one works, but I haven't put it on its uh, sled yet. But I think we'll have some fun with it later, one day. So there, a little diversion. 
I've got some plans for that. I've got to make an exhaust pipe and probably a muffler or some way of fitting a Briggs muffler. Anyway, that's uh, for the future. All right, guys. Uh, see you when I see you. Thanks for watching. I won't bother to put a bit on the end. Uh, watch through if you can. I've cut corners, by the way. I haven't shown a lot of what I was doing. There's no point, really. Just a a few look um, a few looks at uh, various stages. Okay. <laughs> Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Well, here we are. Another attempt at making this uh, thread, the double helix. <laughs> For those who saw my screw up, we're going to try and get it right. Incidentally, on closer shots, you may see this very ugly nail. <laughs> it's it. Uh, don't know how long it's been there now. It's five or six months. One side still holding on, the other side which is lifting off is glued with uh, CA glue <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it there it looks bloody ugly anyway let's get back to this uh, so I'm not going to cover all of this on video it, it's pretty obvious three quarter stock uh, I want to turn down all the way to here to get down to the max thread diameter which I think is 545 so I've got to take just over 100 thou off. So that'll be a few passes and I won't show much of that. Then we've got to reduce down this end, thread relief back here, and then the fun and games to try and cut the thread. I've got a rubber band here just to try and keep the dog from moving too much. It's not completely holding, but it stops it thrashing around quite so much. Right, we're taking this down to the thread OD uh, <clears throat> and just giving a bit of relief here. I must put a chamfer on that in a minute, but first of all we'll get this end taken down and it's uh, this end that has to take this rather rough old collar. So I'll just take that down, do a hand feed. Check that and see if the uh, collar will go on. That'll work. Let's get this back. Well, I'm just <clears throat> going to check here to see what we get a the right pitch because we're going to take uh, six TPI twice. The dial gauge here is, is going to be bright and in the way, I'm afraid. Can't really do much about that. That's working on the back of the tool post. So I'm just going to take using the uh, spindle handle. Let's see what we get. It should be six. Yep, we're good to go on that. So I'm going to take 
take a light cut that should be actually I think that should be about one and a half right let's check this out <clears throat> no, I'm not going to bother you with all the passes on here because I'm taking it fairly gradual so I'll just run one pass here on the uh, camera going to take a while and take it easy and I say this uh, indicator may well be very awkward in camera because of glare but I can't do a lot about it at the moment so I'm going to take some more cuts get a bit further and then we'll switch to the uh, second attempt <laughs> second pass Well, I got so caught up concentrating on this, I, did, I forgot to put the camera on. I finished the first pass, I'm on the second pass now. I started off on jaw three and now we're on jaw one. And I should have about another, about another tenth hour to go, I think. So I'll give you one pass, but I won't bore you with all the rest. Because <laughs> it's a bit uh, tedious, as they say. Well, I'll carry on and try and get this finished. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> See if this effing thing's going to work. Uh, just going to trim this down slightly. There's a ding in it. But this piece of material was almost the right length. I'll take another few thou off here, but uh, I'm going to put up with that ding. This is functional. I've had all sorts of trouble with the uh, thread, which I'll tell you more about later. <laughs> I can live with this small ding in here. Let's put a chamfer on there and uh, we've got to put a cross hole in that and I've got to put a, a bevel on the uh, on the other end. Right I'm too lazy, let's flip this round, I'm too lazy to put the three jaw back on. So I'm just going to, I've got about a quarter of an inch to play with, I'm going to uh, face off the uh, <coughs> the uh, centre drilling and then I noticed the other one's got for some reason a looks like a 50 degree bevel could be 45 it's not too critical in fact this whole thing's not too critical if the truth's known I took that a bit slow because there's a bit of spring in that. I uh, just set up to do the angle. That's the original. I get it in frame. It's um. Oh, it's my pipe smouldering. <laughs> Everything's catching fire. Yeah, that's uh, sixty degree not the included angle, 60 degree uh, taper. So I'll just run some of that on. Uh, 
I think that'll do. This is what bears the load on the jaw that's being driven. So I think that'll be adequate. Well, hopefully the last phase here. Let's just try and get this centre drill. switch over. The, the uh, T-bar is actually uh, 532 but I'm going to go a little bit larger than that. No sorry 516. <laughs> 516. I'm going to go to uh, uh, 2164. The old hole was even bigger than that. Bit of overhang from the vice there, but uh, it was a lot quicker than setting up this piece in the vice. And the amount of deflection was pretty minimal. So we'll take that out, get the Noga on it, clean up the burr, and then I'll come back. Uh, well, <laughs> there it is. It doesn't actually bear really close inspection because I had problems with that thread. I'll tell you more about that when I do an intro. Uh, we've got a one. We've got the cross hole here for the T bar, and the other end. There's a mark there where I've got to put the uh, a hole for the collar. So. One thing I won't be doing, somebody said, oh, put some Prussian blue on the threads and check for fit. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I've probably over-machined it. The, uh, the other clamp has a pretty sloppy thread. And to be honest, for the few times it's going to get used, I'm not too worried. I'll put some lube on here later. So this is where the collar goes, and I'm too, I've been standing too long and I'm too cold, but uh, I've just got to do a cross hole and uh, get that pinned, otherwise it's done. It goes all the way in anyway. So that's it. I've been waiting to get this damn thing done, but it's been... We've had so much extraordinarily cold weather. I did get some heat in the shop today for a while. And the tea bar which is pretty rusty, I have to wire brush that. That goes through nice and easy. And the other one was pretty sloppy. Here's the old one. So I went a little bit for a little bit tighter, but still plenty of slack. And uh, that's the so there are the two ends. I pretty much matched that taper because in here the receiving end here has the dish in it to take that taper end for bearing surface. So, sorry I haven't finished the collar. I should do that later. I'll probably show you at some time. Just putting this... That's the old one. There's plenty of slop in that. 
I did see my threads got a bit more slop, but I wasn't going to mess around and have the damn thing bite giving me trouble. Yeah, maybe a bit more slop, but I'm not worried about it. If I use this clamp once in the next year, I should be happy with it. It'll work. Okay, there we go.